Hi, my name is Allison Robinson and I am the speech pathologist at Oklahoma Able Tech. The content of this video comes from assistive technology consultant Dr. Penny Reed and was presented at the 2014-2015 Oklahoma Assistive Technology Team Regional Trainings. This video is going to cover three major laws that affect assistive technology, or AT, service provision. Then we will briefly discuss considering AT for all students with disabilities. The bulk of our content will discuss the AT assessment process, who should be involved, what procedures should be followed, and what resources can help. Let's start by looking at AT in the law. AT laws that affect schools define the following, the school district's responsibilities, AT device, and AT service. The first law we'll talk about is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. This law has much to say about AT service provision, but we will just highlight a bit. IDEA says that each public agency shall ensure that AT devices, services, or both are made available to a child with a disability, if required, as part of the child's special education, related services, and or supplementary aids and services. The goal is to assist the child in receiving a free and appropriate public education, or FAPE. The second law we'll mention that is greatly impacting AT service provision is Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. This law requires schools to ensure that students with disabilities receive communication that is as effective as communication with others through their provision of auxiliary aids and services. Students most impacted by this include those with hearing, vision, and speech impairments. Effective communication for these students can mean a higher standard than FAPE and may require additional AT be provided. Last but not least, we'll talk about Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. A student is not required to be eligible for special education services to be protected under this law. Section 504 prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities and requires schools provide equal access to their programs and services. Now let's go ahead and define assistive technology. AT is anything that helps someone do a task better, faster, or more efficiently that might otherwise be difficult or impossible to do without it. An AT device is any item, piece of equipment, or product system whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of children with disabilities. It can be shelf liner that is repurposed to keep items in place on a tray or workspace. It's also the walker or wheelchair a person uses to get around. It does not, however, include medical devices that are surgically implanted or the replacement of such devices. AT is also a service that directly assists children with a disability in the selection, acquisition, or use of an AT device. It is the evaluation of needs, including a functional evaluation in the child's customary environment. It's the provision of AT devices. It's also helping in selecting, designing, fitting, customizing, adapting, applying, maintaining, repairing, and replacing AT devices. AT services include coordinating with other therapies, interventions, or services with AT devices, such as those associated with already existing education and rehabilitation plans and programs. AT services also include training and technical assistance for the child and family as needed. Finally, AT services include training and technical assistance for professionals, employers, and others who help in the major life functions of the child with a disability. Next, we'll discuss AT consideration. Per IDEA, assistive technology devices and services must be considered for every student on an individualized education program, or IEP. If you are wondering how you tell when a student needs AT devices or services and when he or she doesn't, consider these tips. 
the student does not need AT when he or she is reaching goals, has access to the curriculum like his or her peers, and is able to effectively communicate with others all without using AT. AT is needed when it is currently being used to help a student reach goals, access the curriculum, and or effectively communicate. AT is needed when it is currently being used and allows the student to remain in the least restrictive environment. On the flip side of that, AT is needed when the absence of it requires the student to be removed to a more restrictive environment. AT is needed when it is not being used, but the IEP team decides it is needed. Any time the IEP team requires more information to determine a student's AT needs, then an AT assessment is needed. The following are amazing resources to help you during the AT consideration process. Big East Educational Cooperative AT Consideration Checklist, Education Tech Points, GPAT Documents, the QUIETS section on consideration of AT needs, set framework documents, and the WADI AT Consideration Guide. Many of these documents and forms look similar. However, school districts and individual IEP teams may prefer one form over another. To view these resources and associated links, please view the Oklahoma AT Technical Assistance Guide by going to okabletech.okstate.edu. Click on the Resources tab and then the Children and Youth option. AT consideration and AT assessment are very different, so let's take a look at some of the major differences. The consideration process can take place within an IEP meeting with the information an IEP team already has about the student. Consideration looks at the student's ability to achieve with assistance and without to receive FAPE. An AT assessment is completed over the span of days, weeks, or even months outside of the IEP meeting. It involves obtaining new information to make a decision about needed supports. An assessment takes multiple interactions with the student, family, and school staff and involves demonstrations and trials of AT to find a match. Something else to note is the difference between an assessment and an evaluation. An evaluation is a group of activities conducted to determine a child's eligibility for special education whereas an assessment is conducted to determine a child's specific needs. Now, let's discuss the parts of an assessment. An assessment should always start with a referral and an IEP team making preliminary decisions about what the main concerns are, who else may need to be involved in the process, as well as when and where additional information will be gathered. Primary decisions are those made about the student, environments, tasks, and AT tools that may be needed. This leads to a trial of potential AT tools with final decisions about what AT will work being based on data collected during the trial. Implementation includes obtaining the AT and working out a plan for its use. Parents, teachers, and school staff will want to refer a student for an AT assessment when the student is not using AT but the team decides it's needed, when the student is not using AT and the team does not have enough information, when the student is using AT but has new or changed needs that may require changes to or additional AT, when use of AT allows the student to remain in the general education environment for longer, and when a student has difficulty accessing educational materials like textbooks, worksheets, workbooks, novels, etc. The following are referral resources and include Education Tech Points and the Wadi Referral Question Identification Guide. Preliminary decisions are those made early on in the assessment process and include determining who else should be involved in the assessment. Since the IEP team makes up the foundation of the assessment team, it may already include multiple disciplines. Other professionals may be included as their areas of expertise are needed. This is the time to discuss concerns about the student's progress and determine where and when additional information will be gathered. The GPAT protocols, 
and summaries and the WADI Student Information Guide will be very helpful when making preliminary decisions about the student's AT needs. Now, it's time to collect the bulk of the information needed for the AT assessment. We suggest using Joy Zabala's set framework, along with other supports, to help you make primary decisions regarding the student's AT needs. SET looks at the student, environments, and tasks to help you and your team make decisions about potential tools that will help your student. The AT assessment team will also need to determine when and where trials of potential AT devices will take place. Great resources to help with this process include the AIM Navigator. This is specific to those students needing access to educational materials. The Communication Matrix. Don Johnston's Protocol for Accommodations in Reading, or PAR, Education Tech Points again, GPAT Protocols and Summaries, Pragmatic's Profile of Everyday Communication Skills, The Quiet's Section on Assessment of AT Needs, the Set Framework Documents, and the WADI Student Information Guide. During trial use, the assessment team will have to determine specific details like who will do the tasks needed to obtain the devices for trial, who will do what is needed to support the student while he or she trials the device, what tasks need to be completed to obtain a device for trial, what cues, supports, and trainings will be needed during the trial, what change is expected to take place in the child's participation during the trial, what data will be collected during the trial, when will the trial take place, and when will the student be expected to use the device. How long will the trial last? Where will the trials take place? When obtaining tools for trial and developing a plan for trialing devices, the following are amazing resources. The AIM Center at the Oklahoma Library for the Blind. This program provides school term loans of AT for students with vision impairments or blindness. Education Tech Points. The Maryland Matchup Tool. Oklahoma Able Tech. This program provides short-term loans of equipment, set scaffold for tool selection, and the WADI trial use guide and summary. Final decisions include obtaining AT and providing it to the student. Here are some tips for this process. Number one, identify the source of the equipment and the costs. Is it available in a district loan closet or through a reuse program? If it needs to be purchased, a team member will need to contact a vendor or a manufacturer to get a quote. Identify funding sources. Does the student have insurance that may cover the cost of the device? What are the requirements? Many Oklahoma-specific resources are available in the Oklahoma AT Funding Manual, found at okabletech.okstate.edu under the Resources tab. If the student does not qualify for other funding sources, it is ultimately the responsibility of the school to provide the AT in a timely manner at no cost to the student or family. Number three, once the funding has been determined, the equipment can be ordered. Number four, the team will need to plan for training as needed for the student to successfully use the AT in his or her customary environments. Number five, the equipment will need to be set up and number six, a technical support system should be established. Final decisions also include documenting AT in the IEP. As mentioned previously, AT may be included as special education, related services, and or supplementary aids and services. You may choose not to list specific names of AT devices in the IEP. However, the features of the AT should be included so that an unfamiliar reader of the IEP would understand the types of supports the student is using and or has used. Here are some examples for adding AT into the IEP. When a student is currently using AT, it may be included in the present level section of the IEP. When considering AT for a student and details about upcoming trials and services have been determined, that information can go in the Special Factors section. AT may also be written into the Student Goals and Objectives section. Additional guidance on including AT in the IEP is available in the Oklahoma AT Technical Assistance Guide at okabletech.okstate.edu 
under the Resources tab in the Children and Youth section. Additional resources for documenting AT and the IEP include Education Tech Points, OSDE's Process Guide, the Quiet section on including AT and the IEP, and the WADI Assessing Students' Needs for AT, the 5th edition. For the AT implementation process, remember to follow the plan completely. Take time to talk to team members and monitor the student's progress to see how successful the student has been using the AT in his or her customary environments. As the team sees fit, adjustments to the plan may be made. If we put a twist on the set framework, we can remember what AT assessment teams should do during the implementation process. Ways staff and supporters will support the student's AT use. Actions that will be taken in the environment to support the student's AT use. Tasks the adults need to do. And help for people in the environment to understand the tools. School districts and AT assessment teams may need help in creating implementation plans. Guidance may be found in the following resources. Education Tech Points, Set Scaffold for Implementation and Evaluation of Effectiveness Planning, The Quiet Section on AT Implementation, and The Quiet Section on Evaluation of Effectiveness of AT. Sample implementation procedures and an implementation plan template have been modified from those in Education Tech Points and are included in the appendix of the Oklahoma AT Technical Assistance Guide. These may be used to help school districts develop their own implementation procedures and plan to use with students. Once AT has been implemented for a student as a continued task, the IEP team should monitor the student's use of the AT. Over time, things change with the student, environments, and tasks, which may lead to changes in tools. There may be new people involved, new ideas and questions may have come up, and new technology may be available. To reset is to look again at the student, environments, tasks, and tools to ensure the best solutions are being implemented. Remember, resetting is not starting over. We have covered a lot of information in this video and we hope you have found it to be helpful. If you have any questions regarding the information in this video, and or need help accessing or acquiring assistive technology in Oklahoma, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much and we look forward to hearing from you.